Okay, so here is uh, sun, here is earth, earth is moving around the sun, this orbit, this is velocity of earth, phi. Now, if we align longitudinal axis of interferometer along the direction of V, then according to Galilean velocity addition, we can achieve two different velocities of light rays. One when going towards the mirror and another after the ray is reflected. So, we can draw. This is uh, one arm of interferometer. This is another arm of interferometer. This is velocity direction. We can align longitudinal axis of the interferometer along the direction of phi. Then we can apply Galilean transformation. So we can achieve two different velocities of light rays. One when going towards a mirror and another when it is reflected. This diagram here is the longitudinal axis along v. this is direction of V and this is one axis, this is transverse axis, this is longitudinal axis and there are two times in this case, one time taken by light ray in the transverse direction to go to the mirror and come back. So, that is TT. This TT is the time taken in the transverse direction for the light ray to go to the mirror and come back. And TL is in the longitudinal direction, time taken by the light ray to go to the mirror and come back. So, there are two T's, T transverse and T longitudinal. If they are equal, then the central fringe will be a bright fringe because there will be no phase difference between this ray and that ray. The central fringe will be bright fringe. But if they are different, if T, T and T, L are different, then you can expect that the central fringe will not be a bright fringe. So that will be a fringe shift. Now we will see that according to Galilean relativity, these two times are different, T, T and T, L. These two times will be different if we apply Galilean relativity. This is just a few steps. Let us calculate the time taken in the transverse direction. Look at this uh, right angle triangle, hypotenuse L square plus V T by 2 square, that is V square T square by 4. V square T square by 4 plus L square, square root, that is, that is the distance, this distance, but you have to multiply by 2, because it is going and coming back. So, total distance for light rays to go to here and to come back, this distance is 2 times this, and this is C times T transverse, this is a quadratic equation in T T, and we can solve T T, very easy to solve. So, that is T T equal to 2 L by C by 1 by root over 1 minus V square by C square. So, that is the time T T taken by the light ray to go and come back in the transverse direction. And now, we want to find L, which is the time taken by the light ray to go and come back in this direction. So, that is the easier, that is L by C minus V and L by C plus V. If you add these two, because here is the Galilean relativity, C minus V and C plus V. One when going and one when coming. So, this is when coming and this is when going. So, you can just take LCM, C square minus V square. It becomes 2 L by C, 1 by 1 minus V square by C square. So, clearly we see that T, T and T, L, these two are different. T T is 1 by root over 1 minus V square by C square and T L is 1 by 1 minus V square by C square and they are multiplied by the same factor. 
So we see that T T is less than T L. Using the Galilean relativity, we have found this T T is less than T L. That means we see that the reflected light reflected in the transverse mirror arrives earlier than the light reflected from longitudinal mirror. So they are out of phase. If they are out of phase, then the central fringe will not be a bright fringe. So you expect using this that the central fringe, the central first fringe, second fringe. So if you use Galilean relativity, then the central fringe will not be a bright fringe. But no fringe shift was observed in Michelson's model experiment. So this was a null result. Null result means fringe shift was not observed. So what is the reason? The reason is that this was done in 1887. So that was much before 1905. 1905 is when Einstein gave his special theory of relativity. But in 1887, the relativity was Galilean relativity. But if Michelson only used Lorentz transformation, then also they wouldn't have expected any fringe shift and obviously no fringe shift was observed. So using Lorentz transformation there is no conflict between experiment and theory. But when we apply Galilean relativity then we see that there is a conflict between theory and experiment. So at the time when Galilean relativity was there, so Michelson Mollet's conclusion was that there is no ITA. So Michelson Morley's measurement were the first with sufficient accuracy to challenge the existence of ether. And this explanation of the null result awaited the insights provided by Einstein's theory of special relativity.